This is it. This is the video that tells you exactly where the abandoned junkyard is located. I give you a contact. I tell you about all the cars you've seen. What about that 71 Ford Torino GT that looks like it's straight out of Mad Max with all the scoops on it? The one in the thumbnail of the other video? What about the Hemi car? What's in all those other garages? Can you buy stuff? Yes, you can buy all of it. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa! There's a couple bikes right there, yeah. Dude, I have the big brother to that purple and white bike. That's an RD250. I've got an RD350, 75. I got a couple goodies in here. <laughs> We're going into garages this time, man. This is a, instead of being just the parts, these are the actual cars that this is the good stuff. This is a, like maybe that. 36 Buick. Buick 8. Yep, and it's got a three, small black Chevy in it. <laughs> they put a 350 Chevrolet in it. Updated brakes. Yeah, this one was the one we were talking about. Looks like they had done a whole lot toward making it into a street rod, right, and then they just right. kind of stopped somewhere along the way. And it's real sweet. It's got the suicide doors, and it's got the fender. Uh, it's got the, um, what do you call it, the, the colors that go over the wheel openings. Yeah, the, uh, what the hell? Somebody's out there going, it's a so-and-so, not fender skirts. Yeah, fender skirts, yeah. <laughs> and then here, my flashlight. It's been sitting in this shed for probably 35 years. Something like there's one of them in there. Years. Looks like something's made a nest in there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's going, close that door. Yeah, there's one of the fender skirts. Yeah, there's a fender skirt. And then... Take some video while I'm in here with this thing. Right, a little light. Seat won't go back. I'm dying in here. Too many wings is what I'm saying. Okay. Turn on the light. I'm gonna have to edit this down so my gut's not in every shot. Okay, here we are inside the 67 Grand Prix energy absorbing steering wheel. That's that one that has that kind of kind of a convoluted sort of steering column. So if they crash you in the front, it goes down instead of killing the driver. <laughs> that says 19384. I'm assuming probably 119384. Switch there for something. That is what's cool. had to write ashtray back in the day in case you forgot you were putting things in your ashtray. <laughs> Little control for something there. Up to, oh, the top. Yeah. Convertible top. Look at that. Lift up handle that was also in the deluxe edition Camaro's first generation. But there's the console. Going front to back. There's a three-speed automatic instead of a power glide, so it's like turbo 350 or 400. See how the tax says economy and power, manifold vacuum. It's a cool car, man. And right there, of course, the keys. GM did this in a lot of the cars in the 60s mid 60s the impala basically had that impala logo in the center buckets like door panels
Nationals. Of course, 67, they still had the wings up here the last year for that. Even a trim piece on the front. Dude, that's, you know, that may be. This was Ford. Yep. Um, that was a lock for it. But this was what they called the banjo wheel. Mm -hmm. This is actually a, a pretty expensive piece. So don't let anybody grab that hard, cheap. Hard to find. Uh, I have the cheaper version of that in my 31A. Oh, really? They had one that just had just a little, one little thing coming out to each side. And it just said Ford in the middle. That was the one that was like in the truck. This is a coil from a tin Lizzie or a Model T. <laughs> You can see right the original Ford logo on the box, but this is the craftsmanship they put into just the coil. They built the box and it was sunken in ceramic. So it would kind of keep the heat from getting too hot and blowing it up. But that little point right there would open and close and that's what would keep the car firing. Got the Ford logo, that's called a buzz box. That had to be 27 on back. That's a very 70s thing. Remember like Adam 12 and yeah, those yeah, were yeah. the lights yeah. on the roof? Yeah, that came off the roof of one of those fire trucks. And uh, uh, a friend of mine, he's got a uh, golf cart. We were thinking about putting that on the, on the top of the golf cart. With, Pull uh, over, Dag, nab it! And putting a siren on, the, on, the, on it. You know? <laughs> How many cars are there? I'm not sure exactly right now. He's been moving some of them, you know, to uh, uh, another guy who's like 85, owns a body shop. And yeah. he's been fixing them and tinkering with them, and any, he, any, he, but he doesn't sell them either. He sits on them, you know. So I can totally relate. That there was a bullet nose Studebaker that he took out of here, and it's, it was real nice. You know what I mean? He's, oh yeah. He's fixing that up right now. We're going in the first garage. First garage. Now there's going to be. What's the oldest car? He is probably a thirty something, maybe the newest yeah, is fifties. The, the oldest one is in here. It's a it's a thirty seven Dodge. Thirty six Dodge. Thirty six. <laughs> There you go. Chrysler. Was this the 55? This is the 55 Chrysler with the with the Hemi in it. With the early Hemi in it, yeah. Oh. And see the beautiful thing about a place that's been around for years like this mm -hmm. is that there's the car and then there's everything that's sitting around it. Right. You know? He has a section in here I'll show you where there's original gaskets for Model T's and I mean uh, you know factory parts it's nice. pretty interesting look at how that door handle is made over there you press in on the portion of it and then it makes the other part come out to open it press in on the back and you'll see what I mean <laughs> does that have enough light to work in here yeah you're good 1955 and it has a locking gas cap on it <laughs> Oh yeah, we're looking at the uh, we're looking at some cool old stuff under here. You see, I don't think there's any power here. Oh yes, this is a uh, thirty it's thirty six or thirty seven. I'm not sure. I have to look. We actually, my fa I went with my father. To the windshield. I went with my father and his wife to Wisconsin and found this in, in a barn. It was a barn find in Wisconsin. And we drove it back from Wisconsin to here. And yeah. it, it's straight eight, runs great. We parked it right here. I think it's straight eight. I mean, Packard always did straight eights a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a very smooth torquey engine. Not not so much a horsepower engine, but really smooth but, torque. You know, we found oh, it's it. got the hood yeah. flaps up yeah. on the side. We found it. <laughs> oh, it's a straight uh, six, six, probably. Six. Flat, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. We found it in the barn. I'd like to have more light, but I, I kind of... There's the rod that pops up yep, and holds yep, it yep. open. Just kind of well, probably rusted that yep. way for the last 50 it's years. Stuck. It's been here. It hasn't been moved for probably 25, 30 years. Oh, man. And it's been in here. I mean, the interior is really nice on it. But we took it up there out of a barn, got the dust off of it. Did you ever see the air conditioning on these? That vent oh, yeah. right there. <laughs> that vent comes up and it it's, Yeah, there's a big handle on the inside of the car and you open it up and it's like a little scoop and it's the vent comes down into there. Let me uh, it's, the it's open, like, you can open the door and see. Oh yeah. Prepare to smell like the Waltons going. Uh, 1940 panhead, you know. Oh Harley. dude, early Harley, Harley with yeah. The, with the military saddlebags and the whole thing sitting there and it was like that might have been actively. the guy wanted well he said uh, I'll sell that. I'll throw that in too for another thousand. I was like, "Holy crap!" 
my father wouldn't do it. He goes, he don't like, he didn't like motorcycles. He don't, and I, so I tried, I got back down here and I said, well, I'm going back. You know, yeah, yeah. Because it was a hard time. Oh, know? absolutely. And it was gone. Early yeah. Harleys and so early he, Indians. He went, he went to a, a motorcycle show. Yeah, there's, look at, on the wall over here, he's got like really old tools and everything. He likes all the, he likes the old stuff. Now he was in the Navy. Yeah, he was Navy. I, I was saw Navy. the U.S. Air Force yeah. veteran thing there. I was Navy too. I have a couple of uh, my one great uncle who passed a couple years ago um, took down seven Japanese zeros oh, from the jack of an LST. Man, there's just so much stuff sitting on the shelves in places like this. And that's only one, well, two of the cars. These are yeah, all, here's all the gaskets, yeah. yeah. It's all gaskets, it's all parts. I think these are original. These are nice. Boy, that is badass. Look at the design of that. And it's flawless. It's absolutely perfect. And uh, the dog that goes in the back window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the head bobbles. You said this is going in the hot rod? Yeah. Nice. It's going in your car. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Have you ever seen any of these? The head bottles? Yeah. My Rottweiler puppy's gonna look at it going, what the? It's moving, daddy! You're about to see something that's gonna blow your mind. We're in uh, Bob's house. He had a little place right on the grounds here. He and his son, Don, built the place together. It's beautiful. There's, You can tell from all the years, all the things that uh, Bob collected inside here made it his own place. It's uh, nothing fancy, but it sure is very cool inside here. Uh, did you notice that uh, stove over there? Look how old that critter is. But they did all of it. All the cabinetry. Now there's one aspect to this property that I was just told about. And uh, you're thinking, what's behind that mirror? I don't know either, oh, but he just told me. Don just told me that there's some really crazy stuff that we're about to see that you do not yeah. think. Oh, it's built in. Big mirror on the wall. And it's a forklift. Mass, the mass for a forklift, the electric forklift built into the wall. All right, so we've established there's a forklift in the house. Why would that be? <laughs> I'm totally, this is intriguing. Okay, we got to come up. There's a little hole in the wall right here, and it's all carpeted and finished inside. I'm going to see if I can get my light on my phone to put some light in there so you yeah, can see what's happening. Oh, he's got a light in there. Okay. Yeah, just got the little control. Now. And he takes you to the second floor in it. Oh, that is so cool. And in case you need to hang your coat up on yeah. the way to the second floor. Yeah. Oh, that is. You know, the second floor access is right there, so it stops. Looks straight up in there. It's like all yeah. the way. Yeah, go ahead. Second oh, floor is just, and it takes you right on up. What year would this have been built? When did you guys do this? Uh, when you built the property? Yeah, but uh, you know, later on, uh, I think he started this in the uh, 80s. So like that, early 80s. And it's perfect for it because a forklift will easily, you can put, put six people in there right. and it's totally fine. Right, and then the way down, it just kind of, it free, you know, real quiet. He almost said free fall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is for. We put salesmen in there. That keeps that keeps the dogs from getting underneath it when you're so you don't squish them. You know what I mean, dude? You, this is so well thought out. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool doesn't begin to explain it. This is amazing. Yeah. It's Who pretty. You know, it's pretty wild forklift design. We just it yeah just took a torch and cut that on welded our I beam on this. You know, and then built the box and then put. And it that in, is going to go absolutely nowhere. Built it into the house, so. It's, and it's all hidden behind the mirror for quick access. Mm -hmm. If you need to replace the battery or anything, you can get or a solenoid or whatever, you can get out of it. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't believe you. I just now saw that. That is so freaking cool right there. There's an elevator. <laughs> That's just insane. That's insane. Yeah, this whole jet is just full of tail light lenses, the whole assembly, die cast assembly. These are basically all the like 
61 to 64 had real similar on the back mm -hmm. and he's got one of each one so no matter which year you had he'd have one and there's boxes of them in there there's they're everywhere so and uh chevy pickup truck amc all kinds of stuff flathead four that is a 64 impala grill a really it's got a little place on it but check this out if you ever see a pepsi free <laughs> diet pepsi free those are all returnable so you can take them back there uh man there's some this would be like 70 71 ford ltd these are torino tail lights more torino tail lights ford wagon there's a dash man there's all kinds of stuff in here dude there's a moon cap for a buick I think there's one of everything in here. There's a yeah, there's several of these. It's the, it's this is the, a badass trailer right here. Yeah, yeah. People looking for taillights. Also original. Speaking of which, that's a late '60s Mustang taillight. Is it? Really? That's like '68, '69. I'm not sure exactly which one, but hard to find. Hell yeah, man. There is some cool stuff in here, dude. Yeah, I just happened to be rolling through here after you last time. Man, there are some of these that I've just, I've not seen these in decades. This car has received more comments and questions than any other thing I've ever posted on YouTube on any video. It's a 1971 Ford Torino GT, which seemingly looks like an extra car from Mad Max the Road Warrior. However, it's not. The one thing that I have to tell you that you're not going to want to hear is that this, out of all of the cars you see in this video, is the only one that is not for sale. It ain't going to happen. Everything else, every part, every piece, every car in this video, fire trucks, all for sale. But this car is not but let's take a quick little walk around here and kind of give you an idea what's up with it Okay, Don, we've come to the end of this entire journey. You showed us the really cool stuff this time. I had so many people on the first and second video saying, you mentioned so-and-so car, but you didn't show it. But right. this time around, we showed everything. And the 67 Grand Prix convertible, mm -hmm. uh, red, white interior, bucket seats, console with a tachometer, white top, that's for sale. Mm -hmm. And we also have in that same building, was that the yellow 30? 36. 36 36 Buick and that one's the one that had the small block Chevy yes, in it small updated brakes kind of a kind of a mid project street rod mm -hmm. thing right for sale yes and let's see we also looked at this little is that a dart or a valiant that's a dart okay that little dart you determined probably has a 340 it's right. a two barrel on it right um, and that's for sale yes that one has some rust down low which is really unusual because all the other ones are very solid so the rest of the cars, that's not really a good indicator of the quality of the others. Right. The other ones are really solid. And um, we also found the Dodge Brothers 36. 
F-37 Dodge. 37 Dodge, and that was an inline six or eight was that? Six. Inline, inline six. six flatty. Flathead. And the Holy Grail, the 55 New Yorker St. Regis, which I had never even heard of until I read it on the side of the car. Mm -hmm. I've never even heard of that trim level. It's a first year Hemi 55. The interior is glorious. I mean, I'm sure somebody would point out a couple little things here and there, but walking around the car way down low, practically no rust. That's the one. How long would you say it's been in there? Uh, it's probably been in that shed there for 25 years. I mean, and that's the one your dad used to drive around to a lot of shows right. and he hang took, out. And, yeah, he took it to car shows. It was nice. It yeah. Was, yeah. It's still such a beautiful, and the more you look up, if you start researching, you'll find that there are trim levels like Windsor and the kind of the base cars. The New Yorker is already a high level, but the St. Regis, when you see all the buttons and stuff, that car is gorgeous in person. And of course, that uh, Hemi under the hood that has been totally unscrewed with. It's, it's just beautiful under there, but uh, have I forgotten any other ones that you and I covered today here? Uh, no, 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 that's pretty much. Now, I had some other people ask about fire truck stuff. Right. Uh, the second truck back as you're coming in has a beautiful siren right, on it. Right. The case has a little crack in it and stuff. Can those be bought separately or are you trying to do the whole truck or where do you stand on that stuff? Um, I hadn't really thought about piecing them out. Yeah. It, it could, you know, because usually once you get rid of those right. couple tr trinkets, then you, you know, now have scrap metal. Right, right. So the person who wants to buy the whole truck has priority over a person right, who's right, trying to buy. To. Yeah, you know. it doesn't have to be that way. But like the ladder truck back there, or they, these probably want to sell those complete. You know, want to piece out all the parts of them out. Do most of these vehicles have titles? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all the ones we've mentioned, the the Hemi car, the uh, Grand Prix convertible, all that stuff, everything's got a title. Right. And uh, I'm going to try like hell to get the Grand Prix from you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're still working on that. But uh, we talked earlier about uh, it's very difficult to judge how you want people to get in touch with you and not get in touch with you. You've got, you've got a lot going on now. So what we decided to do is in the comments below, we're going to post your email address. Right, right. And if you talk to somebody via email and feel comfortable going back and forth and set up something, you can talk on the phone if you feel like right. setting it up. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to do is down in the comments section, we'll have Don's uh, email address there. And uh, we'll tell you approximately where it is. If you want to, we don't want people just coming around on the property and wandering around and things. It's very secure, but at the same time, we don't want people just wandering. So what we will do, is uh, make it so there's some form of appointment set up at, right. at your convenience right. and we'll make it so you can come by. Like I said, it's there's a reason I called it an abandoned junkyard. It's not generally a working junkyard, but the things that are going to get sold now are not going to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Th those cars and things, when they're gone, some of those cars, when do you think the longest, how was, the one in there was the longest period of time. Wouldn't you think closer to maybe 40 years? Oh yeah, that, like that 30, that Dodge, the 37 Dodge, yeah. it's been in there for quite a while. It's been sitting there for a long time. And you see all these people online calling things barn finds and stuff, but 40 years in the barn, that's a real barn find. And uh, like he said, he has all the titles and stuff, but with everything around here, uh, I, like I said, I'm not going to give any kind of address or I'm not gonna give any information on that. All of that will be up to Don, and uh, you'll have to get in touch with him. But as of right now, that kind of draws to an end our, our series of the videos here. And Don, you've been a gracious guy, and your dad, a uh, fantastic guy as well. And uh, I, uh, I remember the first time coming out here, uh, he told me he was a veteran in the Navy. And uh, several of my great uncles were in the World War II uh, in the Navy, and uh, one of them took down seven Japanese zeros from a deck of an LST. So uh, we have we have and had a lot of heroes from that era. And to me, your dad was absolutely one of those guys. And uh, I hope you're astoundingly proud of that guy. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Don. Yep. And uh, that'll be all we have from here. But you guys, the information is below. And if you like the stuff we do, make sure you like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching.